The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at... Why do doctors and nurses flick a needle or tap it? Let me demonstrate. Just before getting a shot, you'll often see us doing this, flicking it or tapping it. So why do we do that? Is it just a nervous tick? Or is it because for some kind of dramatic effect? We're gonna prolong your agony waiting for the shot? Well, of course not. There's a good reason for why we flick or tap the needle. And I'm gonna demonstrate. So here I have a large bore, um, we call it pink needle. And in this little bottle here, I have uh, anti-inflammatory steroid, which is called, uh, I think this one's Depamedrol. So I'm gonna imagine that you're my patient. I'm about to give you a shot, saying your shoulder joint to relieve some um, some rotator cuff tendonitis. So I have a, my empty syringe here, obviously pull the cap off. I'm gonna swap this off with alcohol, make sure that there's no germs on the surface. Insert the needle through the rubber bone. And then I'm gonna suck back. Okay, so I got all the contents of the bottle. And I don't know if you can appreciate that well over this resolution, but if you look in that syringe, that is not kosher. There's at least half air here and half uh, solution. Obviously, we want this solution. That is a medication. Air is for free. We don't want you getting the air. So the next thing is, obviously, to expel most of this air, I could just push up. But look what happens at the top after I finish pushing up. You see solution starting to come out the tip. So if I push anymore, I'm gonna start losing medication. But if you look at the very tip there, oh, again, you can't really see it that well at this resolution here. Let me move up and see if the camera can focus. Uh, all right, no, it's not meant for macro. But anyway, if you could see up here, you would see that there's still some gas bubbles trapped at the very top. If I try to continue pushing the plunger up to expel them, what I'm gonna end up doing is wasting the medication. And sometimes some of these medicines are expensive. I have some shots that cost $3,000 a shot. <laughs> for some kind of rheumatological uh, disorders, for example. I have other shots that are administered um, once a month to some of my patients that cost as much as a widescreen TV. So obviously, we don't wanna be wasting the medication. This one that I'm doing the demonstration for is pretty cheap. Uh, I think it's about $20 with insurance or some, something around that, so it's not very expensive. But anyway, um, so that's why you see us flicking. When we flick the bubbles, it forces all the little bubbles, like in this, this uh, little cartoon here, all these bubbles in solution, by flicking it or tapping, it causes all these little bubbles to coalesce together into one big fat giant baby boss bubble, which you can then pull back a little bit and then push out through the top without wasting medication. See, that's just a pure bubble on the tip there. Oh shoot, you can't, you can't see, damn. Anyway. If you could see up to this close, you would see there's a, a literally just a bubble, like what you would blow out of a kid's um, uh, blowpipe. There's just a little um, bubble hanging on the end here. That was the air that was inside here. So um, most people get that part of the equation right. Most people realize that that's why we flick or tap the needle. Or maybe I shouldn't say most people. Many people realize that's why we do it. It's not to make you feel extra nervous before you shot or because we're nervous and hurting you and giving the shot. It's actually for a, a bona fide scientific reason. But the next half of the equation, most people get wrong. The reason that we have to get the air out is not. Now most people think the reason why we have to get the air out is because introducing that air into someone's bloodstream may be lethal to them, cause something called an air embolus, which is basically a, like a fish out of water panting and you can't get air. So it basically forms a clot in the, um, of, made of air in the uh, vascular si system. That is actually false. That is not why we have to get the air out. To put enough air into somebody to cause some kind of uh, cardiopulmonary embarrassment or distress, you would have to put in about this much or more air into their circulatory system. So only a buffoon or some kind of a nincompoop could be that incompetent to put in that amount of air into somebody's um, circulatory system while giving a needle. So if that was happening, that person should have their license pulled. 
is very, very unlikely that that could ever happen unless it was deliberate. The real reason why we have to get rid of those little minuscule bubbles is because it gives us an inaccurate dose when we're administering the medicine. So for example, with this one here, I only wanted to give this person 0.5 cc's, but the air that was resi residing in here before I administered it took up a whole 0.1 mils. So if I was uh, pulling out, so not in effect, when I extracted my medication from here, I wasn't actually pulling out 0.5 of medication, I only pulled out 0.4 plus 0.1 of air. So in other words, I'm underdosing the, the individual that I'm trying to give this medicine to. So underdosing is not good uh, medical practice. You want to be accurate in uh, dosing. So that's why we try to get these bubbles out. And um, you might think it's, uh, if you just use a better technique that you may be able to overcome this uh, problem. That also is incorrect. If you look at the design of the needle itself, the flaw is already built into the needle. The problem is that there's always dead space here at the very tip here. Right above the plunger, there's this dead space where there's the nozzle piece or nose that connects into the, um, into the needle. So this needle end here has dead space here and so does the tip where it, um, where it docks. And that is impossible to get out. It doesn't matter how many times I plunge this thing, this plunger up and down, I still can't get that air out of there. So it's built into, it's like a, almost like a manufactured defect, if you want to call it that. It's built into the, into the design. So that's why every time after uh, pulling back medication, unless it's something where the dose doesn't really make that huge of a, an impact. So say like a B12 shot, if you get it wrong by a, a point, point 0.1 of a CC, it's probably not gonna cause any problem. Um, so in cases like that, it's probably not as important, but in, with things like insulin and like those really expensive drugs I was uh, alluding to earlier, it's very important to get your dose right. And that's why docs and nurses will spend their time flicking or tapping. That's why we really do it. So um, thank you for watching this episode of Doctor Secrets. Uh, have a great rest of your week and uh, I'll be in touch again soon with some other insider secrets. Stay well. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.